Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are, and thanks for joining me once again on the summary of news and headlines from around the globe. Uh, this is Pete, your friendly neighborhood roaming prepper, and I'm just going to walk you through some of the uh, more interesting highlights that I've seen this week and this weekend. So, what I would ask you to do while we get started... Don't forget to hit the like, uh, and if you want to comment in the premiere, or if you want to comment in the comments below the video, feel free to do so. If you share, I always appreciate it. Uh, the thumbs up or the thumbs down if the news depressed you or made you nauseous. But in any case, don't forget to click something. So, with no further ado, let's go into the uh, news of the week, which of course has been quite bizarre. So a renowned atheist biologist sparks outrage by condemning transgender ideology as a twisted reality, saying a resolutely embracing binary stance on gender. Now this is an evolutionary biologist, he is not a Christian or any religious type, and he just firmly believes that, well, as an evolutionist, there are two genders, with the exception of certain creatures on the earth that can basically create their own eggs, um, humans as a species are A or B. Um, there are some anomalous folks who are born with multiple things inside them, which is an exception and not correct, but this is what he was saying. Um, he also defended J.K. Rowling, who is the author of the Harry Potter series, because she also took the same stance. Uh, needless to say, he immediately came under fire from individuals, specifically the left of the United States, because I don't get it. In any case, interesting. So Congress averted a government shutdown uh, in a stunning twist, according to USA Today. And they passed a deal with bipartisan support. It was voted on in the Senate 88 to 9, with a couple of uh, abstentions or absent people. Uh, it will fund us, if I read correctly, through November, almost to December. So what they did was kick the can down the road while they figure out what to do. Um, the big points of contention, on the one hand, is that the right does not want to continue funding Ukraine. They want to close the border. The left wants to continue funding Ukraine and leave the border open. And uh, now it's just become a big mess over these two specific issues. Uh, but... Well, at least for now, they have not cratered the market or the economy. Although, the way things are looking at times, uh, the market seems to be doing a great job of cratering all by itself. Now, we should note uh, the Fed has not decided whether they're going to take a pause on the interest rates, although uh, other countries and other areas, including some European countries, have decided to do so. So, let's see if the Fed and the government can actually navigate these financial times without cratering everybody in the process. Speaking of cratering, uh, here's a great scenario for you. In Nigeria, a nationwide blackout and fuel scarcity looms as workers mobilize for an indefinite strike. Now keep in mind, in Nigeria when they do have a strike, uh, they will shut the country down like it's bad. But if you think about it, we have multiple strikes going on here from the Writers Guild in Los Angeles and Hollywood to auto workers and other groups. As these strikes continue, what you're going to see is people won't get paid, products won't get made, and there will be some supply chain issues. So plan accordingly. This is not a reason to panic. It's simply a good excuse to go and say, well, if rice is going to be on an embargo or if, you know, whatever X product may have an inflationary effect put on it, Maybe now's the time to get a little extra of whatever it is you think might be a problem for you later. But in any case, be aware these scenarios can happen, and yes, they can happen here. The Jerusalem Post reports that Iran could produce fissile material for a nuclear bomb within two weeks, according to a U.S. source. Um, this is exactly what we've been trying to avoid for the last 15 to 20 years, if not longer. Um, now the question is, will Israel tolerate it? Uh, the Israelis are very notorious for hacking into Iranian systems. They were largely accused of the centrifuge fires that basically burned down an entire research facility and killed multiple advanced scientists in Iran over a decade ago. 
Uh, will Israel allow this to happen? Will they look at it as an existential threat? Excuse my language. I can't speak today, apparently. Maybe I need more coffee. Um, if so, then would Iran act? I'm sorry, would Israel act single-handedly? Keep in mind, Israel, the Saudis, the Egyptians have all been making little deals on the side. They all see Iran as a threat. Also, don't forget, October 4th is the exciting day where the FEMA and FCC folks will basically zap our phones and create a commotion as everyone gets this alert saying, be on alert, this is a drill, blah, blah, blah. Assuming nobody hits the wrong button and does what they did in Hawaii and says inbound ballistic missile threat. In which case, all of us who are prepared and aware and homesteaders will sit there drinking our coffee, watching the general public freak out. Which, honestly, the way things have been nowadays, I would actually relish the ability to sit on a rooftop somewhere and just watch a general freak out occur. I don't know if I'd really like that, but it would certainly as hell be interesting. In any case, October 4th with an alternate date of the 11th. Um, there are various rumors flying around that this is going to shut down our phones. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. All I can tell you is that, yeah... Uh, that drill will probably scare the hell out of a few people who are not paying attention. So criminal tourism is rising. I mentioned this on a live stream last week. Uh, what they are doing, they're coming into the country with passports, fake passports, and going through the visitation process correctly, like they were tourists coming to shop in Dallas or go catch a show in New York. Once they get five, six, or seven people in there, they get a critical mass, they research a few areas in advance, they scope them out, and then they will hit affluent neighborhoods, businesses, and other places that might be of interest. They will immediately dump the cargo to either a local friend, or they will ship it in other containers back to their home country where they will put it on the black market. In particular, they like jewelry, purses, and, well, the usual stuff. But, um, yeah, they're entering different areas, and they're not just from international. You have criminals coming, say, from L.A., will go to a bougie neighborhood somewhere across the country, raid the neighborhood, and leave. So, our friend AOC says the U.S. economy is in a special kind of crisis, according to Stephen uh, Silver from Meet the Press. Um, she just realized this now. She just realized this. And why is it that her eyes always look like Bill the Cat after he's been drinking? I just... Is it just me? Or do I just not like this lady? In any case, she's concerned that the economy is in crisis. Uh, she got an earful of that when she was telling New Yorkers to learn some sympathy because those immigrants that are not supposed to be here are taking up hotel rooms from veterans and the elderly in New York and the people in the street lost their biscuits and basically shouted to the point where she had to stop her speech. So, I don't know what's up with this lady. Personally, they need to vote her out. Um, I, she was not elected, she was selected. MoneyWise uh, reports an interesting article. Charging has been pretty challenging. Ford CEO got a reality check when he took an electric F-150 across sections of the country. Uh, this is not the first time we've heard this, that the electric cars, although very useful in urban environments, pretty much anywhere else, they're not very useful. Uh, you add to the fact that uh, there are limited charging stations, criminals are actually stealing the charging cables because of the copper in them, so even if your Tesla or your Ford Electric whatever tells you there's a charging station there, it may not be working when you show up. Such is life. In any case, um, yeah, not including the fact that the lithium mining for electric vehicles is actually horrendously destructive, probably more so than oil and gas. Well, I don't know what to tell you folks. Um, do we need to go to electric vehicles one day? Maybe. Um, are they doing it right? Uh, doesn't seem so, and he just found out. So, uh, this is an older article, World Economy on Red Alert is 33 trillion, U.S. debt default would have huge ramifications. Now, obviously, they've averted this, but that does not mean that a U.S. debt default would not cause huge ramifications in November or December, or whenever they kick the can down the road. The problem is we are spending way past our means, and at this juncture, based on at least one source I saw, 
the U.S. debt is one of the five largest costs to the U.S. government behind infrastructure and the military. And there's some estimates, these are forecasts, they're not guaranteed, that by 2030, uh, paying interest on our debt will be the largest expense for the U.S. government. Now, a great way to get rid of that debt is to go and fight another country and destroy their country, which is what has happened in the past. Whether they'll do it or not, who knows. But yeah, just buckle up, kids. Things are going to stay expensive. Associated Press, uh, food prices are rising as countries limit export. They blame climate change, El Nino, the Russia war, and a bunch of other things. This is something we've talked about, folks. This is not something to be afraid of. This is not something to panic about. Some of the specific items that may be limited included rice, um, corn, potatoes, other stuff like that we make domestically. Rice was one that came up a few times. Wheat coming from the, um, sorry, Ukraine and Russia, because they're two big producers. Also, um, fertilizer, which tends to be produced also in that part of the world, Eastern Europe and Russia, is going to be in short supplies. So that's going to trickle down, folks. So continue to do what you're doing. Be smart. Buy those things in bulk. If you can't afford the bulk product, split it with a friend or two. At least that way, even if you only get a third of that product, you're paying the reduced price, which is smart. Uh, another analyst states that there's no need to panic over September's market slump. The markets will fluctuate. Um, typically, September takes tends to take a dump. So does October. Um, what concerns me the most, and I've mentioned it repeatedly, is the energy sector going into 2024 um, with refining capacity, with prices, with the reduction in production from Russia, Saudi, and OPEC. Energy fluctuations, as we know, will trickle into other stuff. So just be aware, be prepared for it, um, be smart. Don't please don't be the person who puts gasoline in a tarp in a pickup truck. That's that's just a Darwin Award waiting to happen. Let's not do that. But in any case, uh, the market will continue to do what markets do. Uh, just be smart, and if you do invest, be smart there as well. Be conservative with it. Uh, store your food keep your vehicles running as best you can uh, this is a newer case study although we've heard about this years ago jugging uh incident in dallas texas as you can see those guys uh accosted this uh dad and his son at their driveway jugging is when a criminal monitors an atm or another business they pick a person who may have cash with them uh, from an atm or from a business and they follow you home at a distance, usually from a different vehicle. Uh, all of these individuals were armed, but you notice the owner backed into his driveway. They started hitting the windshield with his, with his, uh, with his pistol, and the driver took off and actually dragged them down the road a little bit, and they managed to get away. Unfortunately, they now know where he lives, but they. Uh, that is a dangerous situation mitigation is the key as you can see in that little picture there you see that lady pumping gas and you see those two legs sticking out of the other end of her minivan that's a guy from that car on the right she went through her open window and is going through her purse mitigation is the key situational awareness back your vehicle in even at home so you can see what's in front of you and you can hit the gas and go forward do not stare at your phone, pump, or ATM. Look around you. Be prepared to react, whether you're going to flee, whether you're going to fight, or whether you're going to call for help. Most importantly, remain calm. Don't freak out. That gives them the advantage. And let someone know where you're going to be. If you're going to go to the gas station and it's dark, let someone know. Let your wife or husband or friend know. Hey, a reminder, riot tips from last, uh, last week, because there are some riots that have broken out and a riot could also be one of these i guess they call them wilding events where 30 to 50 teenagers or young adults go and destroy a store avoid the area if you're there if you have a change of clothes to blend in as you're coming out of your your office do so let someone know where you are that's a recurring theme here uh, walk against any kind of protest and do not walk into a straight up riot where they're throwing things and if you're approached by law enforcement and military, make sure your hands are visible. They are trained to think hands kill. And if you do something with your hands they don't like, they will jump on you and it won't be pretty. 
This is not just for riots, but it's also for many of these incidents we're seeing where they attack stores. As always, I've mentioned it in every single one of the Monday uh, newscasts, thousands of miners are trafficked weekly. Understand the signs of human trafficking, the signs of abuse. Uh, call law enforcement, call the trafficking hotline, get a counselor, talk to your priest, pastor, whoever you think may be able to help. Don't just look for kids on the street and of course worry about your own kids, but also watch their friends. Uh, I myself as a dad of three have had many occasions where I've, my wife and I had looked at another kid coming to visit one of the uh, fr circle of friends and we looked and realized wow this kid is not doing well something is not right so uh, remember we as responsible adults and decent citizens or at least we try to be we have an obligation to try to make sure that the youngest in our community are not coming to harm, abuse, or molestation. Uh, that might get me banned on various internet platforms. I don't care. Uh, I've been put in Instagram jail for talking about trafficking and child abuse. I'll continue to do it until they kick me off. Uh, the bottom line is it happens, and we need to do something about it. Remember, evil only thrives when good people do nothing. And I do believe that. So, in any case, take down that number and pay attention to the signs. Educate yourself what you're looking for if there's a possibility of abuse, molestation, or something else happening. As always, if you want to support the channel, I have a variety of discount codes. Actually, if you hit my link on my link tree, it links you to all of my affiliates. Uh, I don't affiliate with anyone. I haven't either used or tested their gear, so um, I'm kind of picky about who I affiliate with. Um, again, take care of yourselves. Uh, take care of each other. Take care of your priorities. Uh, this is just something fun I do. You want to help me do it. You know, support the channel. Great. But uh, remember, at the end of the day, you take care of yourselves because that's more important to us collectively as a community that we all know and think about what we're doing. Uh, but again, if you are going to buy something and you want to save some money, feel free to do that. And that's the end of my sales pitch there. Okay, and that also brings us to the end of the news and headlines from around the globe. Uh, I hope you found this informative, uh, in particular that jugging uh, video. Those two videos you saw both happened in Texas. Uh, this has become very popular because the weather is good here, other than the heat. Um, people are out and about more often than not. And, uh, you know, the bad guys have cars. They can follow and travel. So, folks, maintain your situational awareness. Be advised of what's going on in the economy so you can react accordingly. And last but not least, don't forget to hit the like and thumbs up. Uh, or thumbs down if you've been offended by something I said. Uh, feel free to share, comment, etc., etc. And uh, folks, I'll see you on the next video. God bless, Godspeed, be safe, and I'll catch you on a morning live, hopefully. But before we go, my travel series continues. I had put a TSA recommendations out last week on my Thursday technical talk. I will have some more stuff, including the much-awaited JFK Depository Building Tour video and opinions. Uh, that one's a long video. Go check it out this Thursday. Thank you, guys. Be good.